And what do you what do you think about the state of our country? Do you think things are getting worse? I think it's a racial powder keg about to explode, and I'm, we're actually hoping for it. Most of the people in the Klan want it to. We want the racial tension. We want a race war, a full-out race war. And racism is a big issue in, in the United States. Well, racism is always going to be a big issue anywhere. You can't have two different races or three races. You can't have this many people living on one continent with this many different religions, this many different cultures, without one trying to step on the other. I mean, that's just common sense. But you, you could argue that the Klan is contributing to the problem, no? No, the Klan ain't contributing to the problem. You can just sit back and let the blacks do their own job. I mean, let them keep killing each other in record numbers. We ain't got to, the Klan ain't got to go out and kill blacks no more. We just drop off some liquor in their town and some guns, and they do it themselves. <laughs> if it was my option, every weekend I would go up to Chicago with a big truck full of whiskey and crack, marijuana, and a ton of guns and bullets and tell them to have at it and just drop it off right in the middle of town. And then go home and watch my Monday morning news and laugh the whole time. Yeah, I knew all you niggers was expecting to see that fucking black ass fucking unk emo on his show this morning, but that nigger is not here today. I want to speak to y'all today while that nigger's up somewhere in the fucking street running his fucking mouth somewhere. I need to speak to you young black folks, not you old niggers. You old niggers is rotting in your ways. I, you already did the work I needed you old motherfuckers to do. Y'all watch Jerry Springer and all them dumbass fucking shows and you let your children run wild. And that's what I needed you motherfuckers to do. I want to thank y'all for doing a great job of not educating your motherfucking youth. Letting these niggers run crazy in the motherfucking street like they're running right now. I want to thank y'all for that. Now I'm to address my little youth, my young black motherfuckers that's doing all the killing for me. I'm very proud of you little black motherfuckers. I don't know what more I can say to you than that. I need you niggers to keep killing niggers like you're doing right now at the ratio, but I need you to step your game up. I need you to kill more niggers. I need niggers killed at the rate of more than what you're doing right now, so I'm using the police force also. I need you redneck fucking police. Keep killing these niggers. They're not going to put you in jail. They're not going to arrest you. They're going to let you do what the fuck you want to do because you're the police. So police, listen to me well. You keep killing these little black motherfuckers. I'm going to keep the little niggers killing each other. And we're going to wipe out these black motherfuckers so we won't have to worry about their ass no motherfucking more. So all I want you young black motherfuckers to do is keep smoking dope, taking pills, dropping quaaludes and whatever else you fucking doing, you ignorant motherfuckers. And just keep killing. That's all I need you black motherfuckers to do. You niggers is crazy. I look at you niggers on TV and I fucking laugh. If I was hanging one of you motherfuckers a month, y'all would be in the fucking uproar. If I was hanging one of you motherfuckers a year, you still would be in that same uproar. But since I'm using your own motherfucking children to kill your own motherfucking children, you're not saying a motherfucking thing. You people are some crazy motherfuckers. I just love the way you black motherfuckers think. You're some illiterate motherfuckers. And you're still looking at Jerry Springer, and you're still looking at the motherfucking Murray show. Well, keep on. And your, your kids are going to keep on fucking dying. So what I want to tell you motherfuckers right now, I'm shipping more dope in your neighborhoods. We're sending out a lot more guns in your neighborhood. And fuck that asshole Obama with the gun control shit. My people in the NRA will not let that black motherfucker pass one bill against my guns. You understand? These guns are here to stay. We need these guns to wipe out this. Let me tell you something. Niggers are fucking our white women at a phenomenal rate. We're losing our race, white people. We must save our motherfucking race. You understand? Fuck that old shit about a human race. That's bullshit. This is the white race, and we're the white supremacists of the white race, and we're going to save our fucking race. And we're going to use you little black motherfuckers to do it. So little niggers with the guns, keep on shooting little black motherfuckers. And if you don't have a gun, guess what? Call us. We'll mail you one, motherfucker. Because the job you're doing for us is phenomenal. We couldn't do this in no fucking way could we get away with the killings of the blacks that you motherfuckers are doing. So Chicago, props up Chicago! Yeah, California, you're killing each... Hey, let me tell you something too, Mexicans. We're coming for you motherfuckers next. Yeah, Donald Trump is on our fucking team. You got that shit right. Yeah, Bobby Jindu. Yeah, all these motherfucking Republicans. Most of them are Klan members. We couldn't do it that uh, no other way. We had to go undercover into the pol political world. So again, to all my little Negroids out there, you little black motherfuckers, please keep killing Please, I beg you, kill off these little ignorant motherfuckers for us. And we won't have to hang one of you motherfuckers. You notice? You never see us with a rope anymore. We don't fucking need them.
We don't need the ropes, nigger. You're our ropes. Your children are our fucking ropes. You understand? We don't need a fucking rope to hang your black ass. We're gonna use your fucking kids, man. Kids killing kids like this black bitch Unc Emo talks about. Yeah, you fucking right. Kids killing kids. That's our fucking army, man. So guess what? Stay out the fucking way. You might live back into slavery days. Because we don't want to kill all you black motherfuckers. We need some of y'all to do the work for us. So little kids, get to killing. Pop them pistols, baby. Shoot them black motherfuckers where they walk. Love y'all. Peace. <laughs> and I'll see y'all when the clan rises again. Ku Klux and Klan coming at you, baby. I praise this to the Most High, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh, in the name of his only begotten Son, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh Shai, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, and the Holy Spirit, who taught us his truth, honors to the brethren that's laboring, doing the work, pushing the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect which would be one-third of us Israelites. According to scripture, who would be the Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians who are seeking their salvation by returning back to the Most High, by hearing and believing on His Word. We back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh Baha Shem Yahweh Shah. And we saw the video clips um, that I played at the beginning. And I got it from this sister here. Um, I'm going to show her names at the bottom of this. Melanin Wisdom. It is her glory. She's in the truth. Got the true name. True doctrine. I guess she got a super high passion. So she likes spreading truth. See a show. Video clips. Read some scripture. Not full out prophesying. But it's worth to acknowledge her. She do great work. We know it's the man's office to teach. But just wanted to mention her, you know, give her her props. This is where I got the clip from. So I got no idea what the title of this lesson. We'll come up with a title after. But the clips speak for itself. So what we're going to do, we're going to play little by little and then break it down with the scriptures. Because everything they say is in the scriptures, you know, concerning the wicked, how they think and how they operate. And how they systematically try to kill off the children of Israel. The Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, and similar Indians. And I wanted people to see this because there's still people out there who are not convinced that Esau the white man is the devil. They're still not convinced that these white people who are Edomites, according to the Bible, are the wicked. This is the Satan the devil, the serpent, the wicked that the Bible speak of. And there's still a majority of our people out there will say, well, it's some good white people out there. It don't matter what good they do on the earth, they are still labeled the wicked. Deuteronomy 28, 68 tell us we would be sold to our enemies. The Lord also tell us that he will send this nation against us as far as the eagle flyeth. The eagle representing Esau, the so-called white man. So these folks was created and put in the earth to come up against us. These are our enemies, no matter what good they do. And our people going to find out in this time of Jacob's trouble, the great tribulation. When the Lord is going to allow Esau, the white man, these Edomites to exterminate two thirds of our people. And the only reason why white people do good in the earth, the only reason you don't see them for who they really are, because we still got laws, law enforcement, firearms, protection. There's still consequences, jail time, prison time, death sentences, 911. Cameras, witnesses, a court system. If you pull all of that stuff back and take it away, you're going to see these people for who they really are. And that's what this time of Jacob's trouble and the Great Tribulation is for. 
the Lord going to pull back everything that upholds this society and you're going to see the devil for who he really is. So we're going to start with this first clip and then we're going to break it down with the scriptures. So let's get to it. What do you what do you think about the state of our country? Do you think things are getting worse? I think it's a racial powder keg about to explode, and I'm, we're actually hoping for it. Most of the people in the Klan want it to. We want the racial tension. We want a race war, a full out race war. And racism is a big issue in the United States. Well, racism is always going to be a big issue anywhere. You can't have two different races or three races. You can't have this many people living on one continent with this many different religions, this many different cultures, without one trying to step on the other. I mean, that's just common sense. But you, you could argue that the Klan is contributing to the problem. No? no, the Klan ain't contributing to the problem. You can just sit back and let the blacks do their own job. I mean, let them keep killing each other in record numbers. We ain't got to, The Klan ain't got to go out and kill blacks no more. We just drop off some liquor in their town and some guns, and they do it themselves. What did he say? He said, you know, the Klan ain't got to kill so-called blacks no more. That if they drop off some liquor, some drugs, and some guns, that so-called blacks are going to kill themselves. So let's see what the scriptures say about that. Let's hit Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 15. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that put his thy bottle to him, and makest him drunken also, that thou mayest look on their nakedness. Now, this whole verse is a metaphor. It's not literal, although it can be literal as well. So what this is saying is woe, meaning what? Death and destruction unto him that give his neighbor a drink and put the bottle to him and make him drunken and then you look on his nakedness <clears throat> so what this is saying you know those in the real world they might put something in your drink they may intentionally get you drunk get you out of your mind so that you make a fool of yourself and they may record you on camera to embarrass you to make you look stupid this is what this is really saying here. And this is exactly what the clan members do. These white people, these Edomites. Woe to him that give his neighbor drink. You know, drink is not literal. It's just an, a, a bad idea. You feed them information. You put them in a position or the situation to do some wickedness. And then what? You laugh at them. Watch them make a fool of themselves. Watch them destroy themselves. So, yeah, and that's what Esau do when he say we're going to drop off drink, drugs, and guns in their neighborhood and watch them kill themselves. So that's Esau what? He's giving us the guns. He's giving us the drugs. He's dropping off the liquor. You know, he's putting a bottle to the mouth of our people. A metaphor for putting the guns in their hands, putting the drugs in their community. Then what? They kill their people. They sell drugs to their people, destroy families, so they can do what? Look on our nakedness or look upon our wickedness. You know, us being covered in shame. So that's what these Edomites do. If it was my option every weekend, I would go up to Chicago with a big truck full of whiskey and crack, marijuana, and a ton of guns and bullets and tell them have at it and just drop it off right in the middle of town. And then go home and watch my Monday morning news and laugh the whole time. That's the point. He said he would drop off, you know, guns, crack, marijuana, whiskey. He said he would do it every weekend. Meaning what? These people actually do that. And I saw... A, a video a while back, a channel that I watched. In Chicago, they found a gun that was gold-plated. It had the American flag on it, and it had Trump on it. Now you know that's one of the guns of them Klan's members, the KKK, that they dropped off in the hood. And then our people got a hold of it and made a fool of themselves. But yeah, woe to him that give his neighbor drink. Woe to him that give his neighbor crack, marijuana, guns, and drugs, that put the bottle, that put the gun, that put the drugs in the hands of our people. You know, 
make our people act a fool, get caught in the act that they may what? Look upon our nakedness, look upon our wickedness, watching us, you know, make a fool of ourselves. That's what these Edomites do. So all this black on black crime, that's orchestrated. You know, at the top, that's orchestrated. That stuff is carefully planned and thought out. And then he said what? That he gonna watch the news Monday morning and laugh. That's them looking on our nakedness, looking on our wickedness. Us being covered in shame. Again, the equivalent of you slipping somebody some drugs, some weed, something they never had before. And then you laugh at them while they trip out. That's what Esau's doing. Now we're going to get this right here. <clears throat> we're going to let this, well, that was pretty much it for that clip. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 50 and 20. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. Now, what two characters in the Bible have the same mother? And, you know, and our brothers. You had one brother speaking against the other. This is Jacob and Esau. Jacob, whose name was changed to Israel, is the father of the Israel, Israelites, the 12 tribes. Jacob's twin brother, Esau, is the father of the Edomites, who are white people today. So what? Esau sit and speak against his brother. He slander his own mother's son. So these white people, you know, dropping this stuff off in our communities, watching our people destroy each other, and then make us to be the problem in America. That's some what? That's some slandering his own brother. So all the things they do, putting the bottle to us, giving us the guns, giving us the drugs, then talk bad about us. Make us, you know, the face of drug problem and gang violence in America. He make us the face of that. That's him was slandering us. But remember, this slanderer is going to come back at the end of the lesson.